I'm pretty sure we'll find out about the Hydro Archon in the next patch. Uh, whatever. Let's just go with it. Hey guys, what's up? Aru. So I've noticed that my Kana, Diana, Jana video jumped in views for some odd reason. So I decided to take another crack at it and predict even more characters from Honkai that I think would fit the seat of justice. If you're curious to know about Kana, the alien Hersher of Honkai, you are of course welcome to check out my video on my channel and on the link down in the description. But that video is not in any way related to this one right now because we're gonna go over characters from Honkai Impact 3 and characters of which I think have a considerably higher chance of being picked as the god of justice. Characters of which are playable within the game and that have a considerably higher chance of being picked as the god of justice. This video is gonna go over possible characters from Honkai that may or may not be Hydro Archon, a quick TLDR on their backstories, personalities, and their appearances within the game, manga, and visual novels. Along with that, I will also add my own interpretations on why they may or may not be chosen to be the next Archon. If you want to know which characters I included, just go down in the comments and description below. But before we go into our first character, let me just give you a quick TLDR for who the God of Justice is and what we know so far. The God of Justice was instituted in place of the Hydro Archon who died sometime after the first seven were chosen. The Hydro Archon enlisted the help of the Loach Folk or Oceanids in the hopes of connecting with all of Tevad. But once the Hydro Archon died, the Loach Folk did not see the God of Justice as the new Hydro Archon. The few pieces of information I took on was the Varunada gemstone and Dane's Leaf's description from Travail, as well as Zong Li's poetic take on justice. The Varunada gemstone says, and I quote, My ideals have no stains. I must correct you. People here bear no sin in the eyes of gods. Only laws and the tribunal can judge someone. They can even judge me. So, praise my magnificence and purity. The following lines are gonna be from Dane's Leaf and Zong Li, respectively. The God of Justice lives for the spectacle of the courtroom, seeking to judge all other gods. But even she knows not to make an enemy of the divine. Justice flows across the surface of the waters. War rages like a flame. As does that which the Cryo Archon wants. <sighs> yes, these details are masterfully done. Now with that said, we can now move into the first characters that can fit this description. So without further ado, let's get started. Honestly, in terms of relation to French and Italian history, as well as naming conventions and visual aesthetics, Durandal pretty much has this in the bag. Her name, Durandal, is from a legendary sword wielded by a knight officer of Charlemagne named Roland, which is also mentioned in the Honkai visual novel found in French epic literature. The meaning behind her name, Durandal, has many arguable translations, such as Dur meaning hard, Durant plus Dal meaning strong scythe, Dur plus and art meaning strong flames, Dirandal meaning blade blinds, or D. L. Jandal, meaning master of stone. If you want to know why there's so many translations, TLDR, some names aren't readily understood names in the French vocabulary. Similar cases are from the sword Joyeuse and Heltekelary. I'm sorry if I butchered these names, but I won't go into extreme detail here. So now, we'll move into Durandal's story. Her real name is Bianca Aitagina, and how she got the name Durandal is from a long-winded story about her losing her memories as a child, except for her name because of the second Honkai eruption, meeting Otto Apocalypse and Ragnar Rothbrok, which basically led her to joining Shiksal and becoming an A-rank Valkyrie, coming across a special item called an Aether Anchor, meeting many important people including Shakespeare, Roland, yes, that Roland, and finding the sword Durandal, which she got her alias from in the end. Obviously, I skipped lots of context, but that's just how long her story is, especially if you read her visual novel. Now, in regards to her aesthetic, you will find most of her French and Victorian era clothing, as well as why she fits as the Hydro Archon visually in the various chapters in game, the manga, and visual novel. A good Archon design or visual aesthetic that Honkai can take inspiration from when making her outfit could be from Bright Knight Excelsis or Palatinus Equinox, which can be translated to Latin Excelsis meaning 
highest degree, palatinus, which is a female term for palatine, which means possessing royal privileges, and equinox, meaning one of two points on the celestial sphere where the celestial equator intersects. Or when the sun crosses the equator and day and night are everywhere on Earth of approximately equal length. Basically, she's both the sun and moon. Now, the modern day origin of Latin is that of Rome in Italy, which I theorized way back is one of the countries that Fontaine may take inspiration from other than France. Now, as for her weapon, I can't think of a better inspiration than from the Black Abyss White Flower, which is a form of the sixth key of creation and has the abilities of which fits how I think the essence of Hydro really is. And that's to create and destroy matter in different forms. Regarding how the sixth key of creation works, I'll go into more detail later. Her personality and practices stems from her experience after meeting Ragna, Roland, and Otto. Because of that, she walks the path of honor at the expense of being alone most of the time, becoming stronger to protect those she cares for and to honor those who died in battle. She has somewhat of an OCD problem because of this, and her fortitude and confidence makes her loathe those who are afraid of getting out of their comfort zone. But she's not the perfect genius lady you would assume from what you see on the surface. Only Rita, her second in command and basically her best friend, knows her real hot-headed and sometimes jealous personality. She enjoys shopping, soccer, and even gardening. Hydro X Dendro synergy confirmed. All that I've said, I think, makes Durandal a great fit to be the Hydro Archon and emphasize the god of justice. Someone who strives to do her utmost after the experience that she had, losing someone important in her life, and is true to her code of honor and values. A trait that is heavily followed by the god of justice. A weapon befitting creation and destruction of matter, and a backstory that can be inspired from when making her own unique lore in Genshin. And let's not forget her background in French and Italian 18th century, which fits the entire aesthetic of Fontaine and their technological advancements. Durandal makes for quite a character to be the Hydro Archon from. But these next two, or dare I say three, also pose quite the argument for being the Hydro Archon. <clears throat> Sele Polarai. I still see your shadows in my room. Can't take back the love that I gave you. Now, is there any more reason for me to say why Sele should be the god of justice? Why, am I the only Sele simp here? If you watched my previous Kana video, then Sele is the next best thing in terms of cute waifu with psychotic tendencies. And no, I am not attracted to crazy waifus that may or may not destroy me mentally. And maybe physically. But yes, Sele Volere is another possible candidate in my book of Archons. Even though Sele has little relation to French and Italian, more so German background, as well as having absolutely almost zero extensive backstory compared to Durandal, there is one big thing that sets her apart, and it's something that Hoyo loves to do when it comes to characters in their games. And that is Yuri! Now I'm sure all of you who have played Honkai and Genshin already know that we have quite a lot of girl x girl slash boy x boy ships. I, I don't know why, but yeah, we have a lot of those. In Honkai, for anyone who hasn't played it yet, we have Yai x Kalen, Mei x Kiana, Ua x Himiko, Durandal x Rita, Rosalia x Lilia, and of course, Bronya x Sele. Please don't cancel me. Even if it is just friendship of youth, you gotta respect them for being that strong. But yes, you get the point. If Bronya is going to be the Cryo Archon, then Sele should be the Hydro Archon, or at least a very important character within the game. In terms of backstory, Sele only has the manga to back her up. And in summary, Sele basically just popped in after being adopted by Koholia, their adoptive mother. She became friends with Bronya after they met, and so their story goes. They met another character named Sin Mal who is quite a bully and is a special mention candidate for being the Hydro Archon just because, well, I like these types of characters. After being kidnapped and saved by Bronya, she then meets her alter ego named Veliona who controls the Sigmata of the 6th Hersher within Sele. Now, Veliona isn't entirely bad and isn't good either. She more or less has to keep Sele safe in order for her to stay alive, as well as being a sort of conscience when making decisions.
decisions. Sayuri then takes part in the X-10 experiment, succeeding for a few seconds but ultimately failing and disappearing into what's known as the quantum state, after which Bronya followed and made a promise to return Sayuri from the quantum state along with some other details that I won't talk about. Most of her development is from the game itself. Her bond and relationship with Veliona developed in chapter 12 where she gave a bit of her power to Sayuri becoming Stygian Nymph, and finally their relationship coming to a close in chapter 12. 23, when Sele allowed Veliona to swap control and have full reign over Sele's body turning into Sarcasm Nyx. Now as for her aesthetic and personality, every Valkyrie suit that she has pretty much fits Fontaine's theme, which could also be both her normal outfit and her Archon outfit. Similar to how Nahida's design looks a lot like the Archon form of Zhang Li and Venti, her choice weapon also being the sixth key of creation. Because remember, she has the Sigmata of the 6th Hersher, but was given to her later in chapter 28 where the Abyss Flower split in two and chose Sele as its wielder which synergizes well with the 6th Hersher within Sele. Now the splitting of the 6th key, which is the weapon that came from the 6th Hersher, is also mentioned to happen in many areas of context in Honkai. Sele wielding the White Flower while Durandal wielding the Black Abyss presents a good backstory for Hoyo to build up upon in Genshin's lore as well. So maybe we could see either one of these two characters being the Hydro Archon and being an important character within the region of Fontaine. Something interesting about Sele is that she started as a quantum type, as well as many of her skills that emphasize phasing through reality and having a very fluid movement. One example is the ultimate from Swallowtail Phantasm. The appearance of chains from the aesthetic of Stygian Nymph and Sarcasm Nyx could also fit how she controls over her region, where everyone is free to do as they wish but is all guilty and therefore subject to divine punishment. Her skills and movement can easily pass similarly to Mona's dash and Yai's elemental skill phasing through reality, not to mention the presence of weighing scales often symbolizing justice, and the fairness and impartiality of the court's decisions. Now, Sayle's personality is way off the mark in terms of how the god of justice seems to present herself in Genshin. But her alter ego, Veliona, on the other hand, holds quite well as the perfect and condescending character. Something that Hoyo only did partially through A and the Raiden Shogun puppet. But Sayle and Veliona being the same person entirely, as well as being the first actual character with an alter ego, would match the theme of Masquerades of the Guilty in Fontaine. And that's pretty much it for Sele. Now let's move on to our next character, which I also think has a very good grasp in terms of Hydro and possible creatures relating to the Hydro Archon. Mobius to me right now seems like another perfect fit for being the Hydro Archon, but that's if you take away her green color and switch it to blue, or at least use her beach skin. Her ultimate basically spawns a merman and slaps the ever-loving crap out of her enemies. And you can't not tell me that this right here doesn't look like a Naga from Hindu, Buddhist, and Jainist religions. So. If you put two and two together, she's a really good fit. Now regarding her backstory, Mobius is a scientist and a mantis that merged herself with a judgment class Honkai beast named Sesha and became the Mobius that you see today. As for why she acts the way she is and why she's basically a child with the mind of an adult, it's all from her backstory in Elysian Realm. And the history behind it is solely based on her interactions with her father. Her mother passed away shortly after giving birth to Mobius but was able to give her name before passing. Her father was a well-known apothecary and a proper parent to Mobius. But at some point in raising her, he got an unknown disease that made him miserable and started to hurt her. Now, Mobius, the prodigy that she is, understood his father's situation that it was due to side effects of his medicine. And on her ninth birthday, she proclaimed to make humanity evolve so they wouldn't turn into what her father had become. Later, she became a scientist, becoming one of the flame chasers, as well as being the person behind the technological breakthroughs in Honkai, such as making stigmata, which is the main weapon to fight Honkai, and metamorphing humans with Honkai beasts called Mantis. She also later became the third Mantis, fusing herself with the judgment class Honkai called Sesha, which resulted in her snake 
Godlike aesthetic and Naga looking ultimate that you see from Mobius in game. She also gained a certain level of immortality, and that when she dies, she revives but becomes younger. Well now, doesn't that sound familiar? I'll talk about regression and resurrection in a different video though. Her personality actually fits well with how the God of Justice is portrayed in the Varunada gem. She's a very logical and analytical person, and her resolve to stick to her ideals so far as becoming a mantis and merging herself with Honkai for the sake of evolution, as well as her tragic backstory and consuming her assistant Klein along with the energy of the 10th Hersher to revive, this all shows the extent of how far she's willing to go for the sake of her ideals and passion, as well as what she is willing to ignore for the sake of her own well-being. A quick summary from Homo Labs provides a proper in-depth video about Mobius though. I don't know him personally but I just like his videos so yeah. Now all this would support the steadfastness of the God of Justice with the rules that she is given as well as what underhanded exploits she can take to further her ideals. Finally what she is willing to voluntarily ignore so she can continue on with whatever she pleases. Paired with her Honkai Beast Sasha looking like a naga snake, and her hunger for evolution which fits what Fontaine could stand for, being the most advanced region, Mobius has the best seat in terms of aesthetic and personality as well as a great link with the Hydro Archon and Fontaine itself. Finally, we have Bronya. Now hold on, I know this is a hot take, but listen. There is without a doubt that we'll complete the first trio from Honkai at some point in the game. But that doesn't mean that Hoyo will strictly use Bronya for Saritsa. If you played Honkai for long enough, you might know the name Anna Sheria. She recently was the Hersher of Ice in Honkai, compared to Bronya, who was the Hersher of Reason with the element or type of ice. Now, Reason, I think, has a bit more ties with the God of Justice than the God of Love and Ice. I mentioned God of Love because Anna Sheriak's story, in my honest opinion, has a bigger emphasis on love and loss, as well as some assumptions that Saritsa used to be the God of Love instead of the Hydro Arc. Bainsleep mentions that the Saritsa is a god with no love left. And Child, in his voiceover about Saritsa, also says, Her Royal Highness, the Saritsa, is actually a gentle soul. Too gentle, in fact. And that's why she had to harden herself. Likewise, she declared war against the whole world only because she dreams of peace. And because she made an enemy of the world, I had the chance to become acquainted with you. Now, take it what you will, but Anna has strong ties with how the Saritsa is from what we know about the Cryo Archon so far. And Bronya to me seems to fit better as the God of Justice considering she is the Hersher of Reason. Moving on to her backstory, it sounds crazy but try and look at this without the perspective of Bronya being Russian. I know it's dumb but bear with me. Bronya's parents allegedly died when she was a child, with her father being first to be confirmed. She then became a young sniper that was sent to assassinate a person named Kokolia, who upon meeting her took pity and raised Bronya in her orphanage. After which, she was experimented on and gained the power to use Honkai energy, levitation, and the manipulation of her weapon named Bunny 19C. But this came at the cost of losing her emotions and the ability to walk. She was then sent to spy on Shiksal and and there she developed her story. After gaining the core of reason, it repaired her brain and healed her legs, which allowed her to walk and feel her emotions again. Now her personality is that of the logical type and acts much like a grown-up. However, she has problems understanding concepts of intuition, so she can't really take her own gut feeling into account when making decisions. Now add to that the very eerie and logical statement about what I can only assume is the heavenly principles in the Varunada gemstone, then you have a very suspicious looking Archon. Now I'm not against the opinion that Bronya is most likely the Cryo Archon, the same way Himiko is the Pyro Archon. In fact, I'm okay with waiting until both of them come out. I'm just open to the idea that Hoyo might throw in another character from when Honkai was first released after we got Teresa Apocalypse. Now if Hoyo feels quirky and crazy while building Fontaine and releases Bronya right away, her robot aesthetic and clothing designs would automatically fit 
with Fontaine's steampunk and techno vibe. Almost all her suits fit the technological and very Victorian-esque design of Fontaine. Her personality fits the role as she's very calculative, zero errors slash flaws type of person, and a very straight face as well, along with Silverwing and the X, fitting the older and wise type character and aesthetic of the God of Justice's intelligent yet cautious nature of the Divines. Heck, her being the Hydro Archon makes room for Seilei to be a character in Fontaine just like in Honkai Star Rail. Add to that her backstory in Honkai Impact, we can also make a short backstory on what might have happened in Fontaine. Maybe someone who gained her powers at the cost of losing something precious and was made to keep tabs on Teyvat in the guise of being the replacement of the previous Hydro Archon. Or an Archon who knows the exploits of the Heavenly Principles and judges all other gods as well as being very particular with what parameters an individual can be judged. Similar to how Mobius can be put into Genshin. Fontaine is also, well, speculated to be close to Celestia. And if there's one place where Bronya's robotic arm would fit, it would be Fontaine. But then again, Snezniah has a lot more going on than just ice storms and enhanced humans. As we've recently discussed robotic gods that look similar to Bronya's own Bunny 19C. Of course, this is all speculation regarding Bronya being a candidate. I know you might be mad or you're already mad and think I'm wrong, but I'm just trying to show a different perspective compared to what we already think or speculate to be. And there you go. Which characters from Honkai I think would be a good fit to be the Hydro Archon as well as some bit of backstory for how their story might end up. So what did you guys think of the characters I stated so far? Who do you think would best fit? the god of justice. Comment below on who do you think it should be or maybe give your own unique twist on what the Hydro Archon will be like. This video has been in the back burner for a while and I decided to pick up on it since we already have Nahida as well as seeing the spike on Kana and we also have some idea on how Hoyo picks their Archons. Of course it's all up to Hoyo and who they decide on who the Archon will be however. I'm just here to ramble on about what I like from the games. But if you enjoyed this video leave a like and by all means hit that subscribe button as well as the bell icon to stay up to all of my videos and streams. If you want to support your boy, go check out my other socials down below and thanks for watching. I'll see you guys on the next video, yeah? Like, comment if you enjoyed, subscribe for more of my ramblings and stay mad theorists. Bye!